Our Q's Connection series continues. We talk Orange men's basketball with a freshman off this coming season, now a rising sophomore, we can say, with the school year concluded. Quincy Garrier joins us from uh, Montreal. Q, uh, good to see you, and you look you look great. How you feeling yeah, right now? I'm good. I'm just, you know, I'm just staying at home, uh, spending time with my family, playing games, and uh, doing some school stuff for uh, my online class. Pretty much done. Uh, like I, th- I think I'm going to be done in a week. So, yeah. what was it like from a student perspective over the past, really several weeks, six weeks since the season ended? That's the time that you guys kind of hunker down on your classwork anyway. Uh, how did that get affected by COVID-19 and, and by the online learning environment? I mean, it's, I, I feel like it's the same thing. You know, I, I, I like it more, I think, online. You know, I'm not like, you know, I'm not going to class. So, you know, I'm just doing my stuff at home. So it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, in a way, you could take it at your own pace, right? You can wear sweats. and uh, Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what, uh, what did you study this year, uh, Q? And how was that transition uh, kind of into the, the American – student athlete environment so i was uh i was do, i was trying to be in a uh, sports management mm-hmm. but i think now i'm gonna go uh, i'm gonna do a, f- a french uh, degree i'm gonna do something in french but uh i, I feel like the f- my first month in syracuse was kind of hard for me you know i was just um uh, i was just nervous about my my english and everything but uh after a month i felt like i was used to it and you know i felt like school is not that hard um so it was pretty i went pretty well for me I think for those of us who, who English is your first and primary language and use it all the time, it, we take for granted how hard it is for those of you who, around the world, you, you have to learn English to function uh, in yeah. society, but your native language is French. And, and uh, yeah, exactly. if, if Americans had to learn French on the spot, uh, they'd probably have a tough go with that. How do, yeah. how do you do, sort of deal with that mentally, let alone – learning it but it's just sort of the transition and, and the worldly nature that uh, you have to have coming from uh, a different country i mean uh three years ago when i played for team canada um i remember we went to france for like a week and i was the only one on the team who was speaking french i was you know translating for my teammates and everything so i feel at that time that moment of my life i was really using english on a you know on a daily basis because you know i have a lot of friends from basketball and they only speak in english so it was not that hard. It's just the fact that now, you know, like after the like post game, like interviews and stuff like that, uh, it was just, I was just nervous. But, you know, when I'm, I was used to it, I feel like it was not, it's not hard. And I feel like my English got like pretty, it's pretty, pretty good right now. So, yeah. No, absolutely. You're a go to guy in the, the interview setting and that type of thing. But, you know, basketball is going to allow you to see the world, right? If you, yeah, exactly. you went to France with Team Canada, you went to Italy in the summer with the Syracuse team. Is that something you really enjoy, the, the opportunity to kind of cross borders like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, for Team Canada, I went, we went to France for a week, and then after we went to uh, Spain for two weeks. Uh, and, yeah, for Italy, it was a pretty good experience for me. Uh, I really uh, enjoyed my time in Italy. Uh, I went to Mexico, too, uh, for a basketball uh, NBA camp. You know, I just, I'm just grateful, you know, to uh, be able to travel bad because of basketball yeah and who knows what your uh, pro situation will turn out to be when when that time comes but very frequently guys will wind up uh playing overseas if the nba doesn't work out and, mm-hmm. and i would imagine if you're able to take that easy it makes it a little more easily uh done if you're able to kind of get over that hurdle of picking up other cultures and, and yeah. uh, finding yourself in that situation exactly so l- let's go through the season uh, and you could maybe start in italy that's where we first got to see you a little bit. Um, and the expectations on you were so high because you're the next guy off this pipeline and, and following mm-hmm. somebody like O'Shea Brissett and then kind of taking yeah. his position on the team. Uh, how about start there from last summer, uh, where you felt you were and, and uh, how far you think you've come since then? Uh, I feel every day I got better. Um, you know, uh, I think the expectation that people had on me was not – I didn't – you know, I think people was – thinking that I was about to average around like, you know, 13, 14 points a game, ending up averaging seven points. But I feel like I got better every day and especially uh, the mentally part, uh, you know, how to visualize the game, uh, make plays for my teammates, you know, uh, recognize my role, know my role. And I feel like I really got better um, over the days. And, you know, I was working hard, uh, working with Coach Red, 
listening to what uh, Coach Ben was telling me. Uh, and, you know, uh, I feel like next year is going to be a bigger year for me and for my team, especially because, you know, this year we had like a, a rough year kind of. You know, if you take a look at the past year in Syracuse, it was not the, the best year that we had uh, this year. So uh, I think everyone is looking forward, you know, to work on their game and to be ready for next year. That's always a great opportunity to advance from your freshman to sophomore year. But we've never had anything like this before. A pandemic mm -hmm. that has shut down the world. Forget yeah. about the sports world. So give me a feel, if you can, for how you're spending your time right now related to keeping in shape or, or basketball activity. Okay, so like I said right now, I'm resting uh, because of my groin. I've been hurt uh, pretty much the, you know, the whole year. I was playing through the, through the pain. So right now I'm just, you know, resting for the season to be ready um and right now you know i'm just i'm at home uh spending time with my family actually i'm really grateful for it you know i'm not really seeing my family uh a lot so um i'm playing games i'm playing ps4 playing fortnite call of duty uh and i'm doing my my school stuff I'm almost done like i said and uh that's pretty much it you know i'm not really going out right now i'm just staying at home if i'm going out i'm just going to the grocery store or stuff like that but I'm not really seeing my friends, I'm just seeing my family, and that's pretty much it. What are the guidelines in Montreal right now just for life in terms of what you're allowed to do when leaving the house and how close are they to returning to some sort of normalcy? I mean, right now they recommend to just, if you go out, uh, just one one person to go out. If you're going out with, a, there's like two people in your car, um, and the police is arresting you, and if you don't live at the same address, you can have a ticket uh, going up to 6000 I think. Wow. 6000 Yeah, I heard some people had the $2,000 uh, tickets and stuff like that. So, you know, they really, uh, they really want us to uh, listen to what the government said. And, uh, but they're going to start reopening everything. And uh, I think last, uh, next week, uh, they're reopening the, the malls uh, May 4th. And some school, the primary school and daycare, they're going to be open in two weeks. So, yeah, so right now we're just listening to what the government said. and Yeah. All right. Well, so you know around here and in lots of communities, I'm sure, the, the basketball courts, the public parks have been shut down. They're either yeah. covering the baskets or taking the rims yeah, exactly. down, which is – it just hurts you to see it, right? And, yeah. Uh, for you, what's the closest you've come to, to playing ball? Aren't you itching to – get some shots up or do something like that? Yeah, like right now I'm at my dad's crib and, uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm shooting, uh, you know, doing some form shooting outside in the backyard. Um, and that's pretty much it. I can't really do nothing right now. That's, that's, yeah. that's, 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 it. that's it. So I know you'll be dying to get in the gym uh, when you get the green light, right? Yeah, but I think it's the perfect time for me to rest because, you know, even I feel if the basketball court was open, I would not rest. And, you know, I really like playing basketball, so... I think it's the perfect time for me to rest and be ready to go in a month or a couple okay. months. That makes sense. Well, one of the things that's a strength for you coming in as a freshman, you're physically developed beyond what a freshman typically would be. Have you been able yeah. to do that? Are you working out at all or, or is it completely shut down rest? No, nah, completely shut down. Okay. Um, I've been working out uh, like three weeks ago, but in the last two weeks, three weeks, I'm just resting. Okay. I think I'm just going to be like that for the next month, for the, the whole month of, uh, of May. Okay, so then yeah. uh, you'll be shut down for, let's say, two, two and a half months. And then yeah. if you do get the chance to go, if I said hypothetically you could uh, return to the Mellow Center or wherever, even your own uh, local gym, yeah. let's say, uh, start of June or the middle of June, what is it that you really want to do in terms of working on your game? Uh, so first of all, uh, getting back in shape, uh, that will be the, the main thing. Uh, my ball handling, uh, you know, um, I think it's going to be a major key for me next year. Make plays for my teammates and create my own shots. Uh, and my shooting, my shooting, yeah, this year, you know, I think I, I shoot uh, over, uh, I shoot 50% from the field, but my three-point line was, right. I mean, awful, you know. I'm not, I, didn't, I didn't shoot the, like I was supposed to shoot. And uh, I think that's pretty much it, you know. And uh, watch a lot of videos, uh, basketball videos to uh, increase my IQ, and that's pretty much it. You know, the coaches cue and people who know you from recruiting say, hey, he can shoot it, can shoot it yeah. better than you showed in games. And, and I understand yeah. it's, a, it's a different animal uh, once it's for real. Mm -hmm. what, what's your next step? Do you, do you feel like you try to uh, widen out your range and, and master the 17-footer? Or, or do you really get out there to, to three-point range and, 
and let it I, fly. I think it was just me being confident too. Uh, you know, uh, at some point, you know, coach coach was really smart about, about like say, telling me to not shoot because you know I was not making shots, so I understand totally why he was telling me that. But uh, I, I had a conversation with him. He told me, you know, next year we're going to shoot. And, you know, just now I, I just feel like, you know, I'm going to make shots next year. You know, like when your teammates and your coach give you the confidence, uh, the confidence to shoot, it's just going to be make everything better for me to, you know, just go out there and shoot the ball. But uh, I feel like I improved my game uh, physically, you know, I'm rebounding. I, never, I, I didn't know that I could, like, rebound like that. And uh, so it's going to help me, uh, obviously, for next year. You had three double-doubles. Uh, you really were a good rebounder in terms of minutes played. You, you made an impact uh, out there. How did you view the, the sort of highs and lows of the season? And, and maybe particularly if you could comment on – there was a stretch of about four or five games in a row uh, near the end of the year, once you got into February, where it really looked like you were hitting the group. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just uh, – I feel like – I gained confidence, you know, uh, for my coach, and that was the the biggest thing for me. Uh, when you go out there and you let your 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 coach is trusting you, I think for me it's one of the main thing. Especially your teammates, you know, Elijah, Buddy, Joe, Marek has confidence in me, Barama, and uh, we you know we were playing together. And I was not thinking, you know, I was just going out there playing my game, even if I know I was not starting, I was just ready to go. So. I think that's why I had a, a pretty good uh, run. I remember, I think, the five five games in a row. And it was against good teams, you know, Florida State, uh, uh, Louisville. So, yeah. It's amazing the role confidence plays, right? You've mentioned that a bunch of yeah. times. Do you work on the mental approach at all? You said you're maybe watching some other games to, to get a yeah. field spacing and, and basketball IQ. How do you do that? Uh, I mean, right now I'm watching a, a lot of like Kobe Bryant, uh, Michael Jordan's documentary. It's really good. I feel like, uh, yeah, uh, my my vision of basketball changed a little bit because of that. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that I can do, you know, to uh, relax and be ready to go. Uh, my routine's not going to change for next year, like before games and whatever. But, you know, I know my role is going to be bigger next year because it obviously like Elijah left. And uh, so, yeah, I just got to be ready to go. You know, the whole basketball world and sports world are watching that uh, Michael Jordan documentary. It's closest yeah. we have right now to real sports yeah. now that the NFL draft is over. Before all this, what was your perception of Michael Jordan? And now that you watch it, what do you think? Uh, I know he was a hard worker. Like, I really know he was a hard worker, but not like that. Uh, you know, he always uh, always been competitive. Uh, when someone telling him that he was not good, he was going to the gym and trying to prove everyone that they were wrong. So, you know, it's just his mentality is over a lot, like it's over a lot of players. And I think that's why he was special. So, yeah. As a rebounder, what'd you make of the Dennis Rodman sequence and the way that he approached the game? Uh, yeah, you know, he's just going everywhere. And he was smart too. I didn't know that he was smart. Like he was telling uh, in the documentary that if the ball was shooting example from the left side, he was going to the right side and he was like, telling every, every time, like, what is what, what was his position uh, every time there was a shot. So, you know, he was a really smart player, and that's why he was, like, you know, one of the best rebounders ever in, uh, in the NBA. Yeah, good reminder, right? If you're going to have 15, 20 rebounds, you better have an idea where they're going to go. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Figured out. Exactly. What about the hair? Do you think you could copy that? No, 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 it's not me. That's not me. That's him. That's not me. All right, <laughs> you got to have your own, uh, your yeah, own exactly. style. Are you catching yeah. up with the guys at all, Q? Uh, yeah, I'm talking a lot to uh, Elijah, uh, Buddy sometimes, Joe. Uh, and that's where uh, Brahma. Yeah, Brahma too. Uh, that's pretty much it. How's he doing? Where's he? Uh, I think Brahma's in New Jersey right now. Yeah, okay. he's with uh, at his uh, girlfriend, I think. Great. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we don't know what's going to happen here, when the season's going to start. Hopefully it's on time and all of that. But yeah. I know you're, you'll be chopping at the bit to get back to uh, that routine once you're healthy. What do you mm -hmm. think of the, the upcoming team here and, and how you'll get ready for the year? Because you won't have maybe the typical. If you were on campus right now, you'd probably be playing pickup games uh, yeah. with the guys. And, and uh, you'll get into that, but it'll be later. Yeah, um, I think everyone just needs to be focused on working hard. I, th I feel like if, you, if everyone is working hard, uh, they're doing what they have to do. Uh, I think we're going to be fine for next year. You know, uh, 
the 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 the, the guy from Illinois, uh, Alan Griffin. I think he's going to be yep. major key for us too. A pretty good shooter, and uh, there's two recruits coming up too. Uh, so I think we just got we just need to work on our game, and I, I feel like we're going to be ready to go. Well, you'll lead the ACC in Alan Griffin. So you'll have one that's an assistant coach and one that's a player. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's good. All right, uh, Q, we appreciate the time. We'll let you finish out your schoolwork you. uh, strong here and stay safe and healthy, and uh, we'll catch up with you when you get back to campus, okay? Thank, thank you. Appreciate it. Be well. All right.